Hello everyone, welcome to Diana webinar. My name is Jean-Claude Borrell and today I'm going to give you a live demo about modeling and analysis of placement of a culvert with varying water rates. For this live demo, I will use uh, the model of one of our online tutorials. So you will be able to find it later on our website, on our tutorial webpage, if you want to exercise it yourself after this presentation. Uh, during this uh, presentation, I will keep your microphone uh, muted, but you can raise your question via the chat box. So let's start uh, with some uh, general information on the model. So I have a few slides to go through. Let's talk about the dimension of the model. Um, we will model uh, a culvert where the maximum dimension is 7.2 meter and 2.4 meter. And uh, this uh, culvert will be surrounding by a uh, soil uh, where the dimension are 20 by 10. And uh, we will have two openings in this uh, culvert of 1.7 times 275 meter. In terms of uh, material property, we will uh, keep the model uh, linear and uh, we will consider two materials, uh, one for the soil and one for the concrete. Uh, the properties are listed in this table. And uh, we will start with a complete model using soil property and during the stage construction, we will place the curve culvert and we'll use the concrete uh, property. Let me get back to the geometry. Uh, for the purpose of the stage construction, we have to model the uh, geometry in different uh, sets. So we will create a set for the soil under the culvert. And this will call we, this we will call it basic basis soil soil basis sorry. Then we will make one for the culvert, one for the soil on top, so the soil covering the culvert, and two sets for the left and right uh, opening on the culvert. For the analysis, we are going to do a stage construction and uh, we will consider six phases. Uh, the first one will be the initialization where the whole model is only soil and the water level is a constant water level at minus two meter. In the second phase, we will lower the water level to minus five meter. I see that there is a typo here, it should be five meter. Uh, so the, we vary the water level from minus two to minus five meter. Then in the third phase, we excavate the soil uh, of this part. Then we place the culvert using uh, the culvert set and setting, uh, assigning concrete property to it. Oops. And then we place back the soil on top of the culvert. And finally, we rise the water level and we come back to minus two meter. So these are the six phases that we will uh, have in our construction stage uh, analysis. Let's start modeling. So of course we start Diana. Here we go. I forgot to mention that in terms of uh, loads, we don't need to specify anything. Uh, we will consider the dead weight. So this will be automatically taken into account uh, during the, with the construction stage analysis. So there's no modeling required, no specific action. Uh, just for uh, sake of uh, everybody can see my screen because I noticed that some people complained that they couldn't see the slides of the presentation. So can you just uh, raise the on sign to confirm that you see the screen with the Diana window? So apparently the problem is solved. Don't know exactly what was going on, but 
hopefully now we can continue without any technical issue. So let's start modeling. So we first defined a, a new model. So we go to file, new. So we need to specify a, a project name. So culvert installation, for instance. Uh, we can use a specific folder. I have one for that. So you have to choose a place that makes sense for you and a project name that also uh, is relevant. Uh, for the analysis type, we will only consider the structural aspect. The dimension, we are going to uh, do a plane strain uh, analysis. And for the model size, we specify one kilometer. So this parameter is important because it uh, will determine the size of your modeling box. So uh, you have to be careful that the model you are going to define fit within this modeling box. For the default measure, we choose the exact quad dominant and we will choose higher order, so quadratic element with on shape mid side node location. And then we click OK. In terms of units, uh, we are going to use uh, the default one meter, kilogram, newton, second, Kelvin, radian. We can now start the modeling part. So as I mentioned uh, for the for later for the purpose of our construction sheet stage we need to define uh, several uh, entities. Uh, one will be the soil basis, uh, another one will be the culvert, another one will be the soil covering so the cover soil uh, geometry and then the left and right opening of the, the culvert. So in order to facilitate the uh, modeling during this live demo, I have already prepared uh, uh, an Excel sheet where you see I have all the coordinates. So it's just for uh, yeah, easy convenience. And I will uh, just copy this uh, coordinate to Diana IE. So I start with the soil basis. I click on the add sheet. And here I set up the name soil basis. For the method, I choose coordinate. And here I'm going to copy paste the coordinate from my Excel table. And then I click create. Uh, this is important. Uh, do not forget to click on create, otherwise your uh, geometry won't be created. And I see that I made a typo. I click create. And then on the fit all button, and here you have the set sole basis. We continue now with the culvert. So this is one way to create the geometry, and it's not the only one. Here is a curvet without the opening. Then we are going to create the covering sole. And finally, we are going to create uh, one of the opening. So so opening left to create the right opening I'm just going to copy the opening left to the other side so create then I'm going to use the array copy option so geometry array copy so I select the opening left and then I define an offset of 3.05 meter and I copy it one time and I click apply. So now if I go to the geometry window under the geometry and I expand the tree, I see that I have my five uh, geometrical entity. I'm going to rename the copied set to opening right. And then all my sets have been created. 
Now I need to uh, subtract the left and right opening uh, from the culvert. So I'm going to the subscribe shape option. Then I need to select a target. This target will be my culvert. And for the tool, I choose right and left opening. The operation uh, is set to subtract. And here it's important, I'm going to keep the tools. Uh, if I don't check on this option, then the uh, two shapes, opening left and opening right, would be deleted after the operation. I need to keep them for the uh, stress initialization. Click Apply. And now if I only show the curvert, you can see that the two opening have been subtracted and I have a proper geometry set. I reactivate everything. Next, uh, we need to set up the boundary condition of our model. So I quickly go back to the PowerPoint because I'm afraid that not all of you could see it. So just as a gentle reminder, this is a, this where the dimension of the model the material property that we are going to use, but I will get back to that at the right time, and the different phase that we are going to uh, follow. And as you can see, uh, the model is constrained on the lateral uh, side on the, you know, along the x direction and uh, supported in the y direction at the bottom. So we are going to apply this boundary condition. So I create a first one that I'm going to call BCX, and it will be part of a set that I simply call BC for boundary condition. The target type, I set it to age, and I select the two sides of my model, and I fix the uh, X translation, and I click Create. I repeat the same operation for the bottom one, so I create a condition called BCY, which will be part of the same set. Target type still age. I select the bottom. Yeah. Select the bottom line. And then for this one, I fix the uh, Y translation and click Create. So now we have created the uh, boundary condition of our model. So we are almost complete. Now we are going to assign the property to our model. So I again come back to my slide with the material property. So for this uh, model, we are going to use two materials, the soil and the concrete, but we will keep linear. Uh, for the stress initialization, all the sets will have soil property. Only later, when we place the culvert, we will assign concrete the material to the culvert. So I have already uh, defined this uh, material property, so I can easily uh, import them. If I go to the model section uh, material, and I click on the import material from existing file, this uh, point directly to the to my working directory where I already have the material file and I import the two soil and concrete material. We can quickly scan them so I can edit the soil material. So for the soil I choose a linear material property that are here. I, uh, activate, I, activated, I activated some aspect to include the initial stress and the shear pressure capacity. For the initial stress, I choose a ratio of 0.577. And for the shear pressure capacity, I uh, put a friction angle of 30 degrees, so 0.52 radian, and a cohesion of 10,000. And the concrete material, it's uh, fully linear. So now we need to assign this property to the model. So I click on the Edit Assignment property. 
So as I said, we are going to assign to the whole, to the entire geometry, the uh, sole property. So we select the whole model. For the element class, we choose regular plane strain. And for the material, we choose soil. And we click clear, create. The last step we need to define uh, before meshing uh, is basically the definition of this uh, two water level. Um, we are going to consider two water level, a constant one at uh, y uh, uh, equal minus two meter, and uh, a varying one uh, which uh, will uh, with a head at uh, minus two meter on the outer edge and the uh, head of uh, minus five meter under the excavation uh, port. So I go to the geometry tab, water level, and I click add. So the first one, I will name it water level minus two meter. I'm also going to copy the data for this one. So this one is constant. Click OK, and I'm going to define a second one. I repeat the same operation. What's on here? I call it minus five meter. And you can see that this one uh, on the outer edge has a head at minus two meter and uh, minus five under the excavated part. So model is almost uh, ready. We just need to uh, assign some uh, mesh seeding and uh, generate the mesh. So I click on the mesh property icon. Uh, target type, I select shape. I'm going to use the element size as a seeding method. I select the entire model. And we are going to use a size of 0.3 meter. And uh, if you remember, at the very beginning, we we asked for uh, exact the dominant. So the measure is going to uh, create elements, quadrilateral elements, with a size of 0.3 meter uh, everywhere it's possible. So you may see some triangle element where it's not possible to generate this uh, quad element. I click Apply. And finally, I'm going to generate the mesh. So you see that uh, most uh, of the elements are quadrilateral, but there are some triangle element in part where it was not possible to generate quad element. So the model now is uh, completely ready. We need to move on to the analysis setup. So from the analysis window, I'm going to expand it a little bit. I click on Add Analysis. Uh, I'm going to rename this analysis to uh, Culvert Installation. And I'm going to uh, choose for the stage construction. So I right click on it, add command, and choose the stage construction. So this is one of the new features of Dyna 10.3. So it's, let's say, a simplified version of the phased analysis. And it's very tuned, uh, very much tuned for uh, geome geomechanical uh, analysis. Uh, as I previously mentioned, <clears throat> we have uh, six uh, stages. I quickly get back to my PowerPoint. So these six stages are the initialization, where the whole model has soil property and the water level is minus two meter. Then in a second phase, we will lower the water level to minus five meter. Then we will excavate the soil. Then we will place the culvert with concrete property. We will then put back the soil on top of the culvert. And then finally, we raise the water level to uh, minus two meter. So these are the six stages that we are going to consider and, and that we need to define in our analysis. So first, I'm going to add the first stage, 
by right clicking on the geomechanical analysis and add stage. And I rename it to initialization. So I'm going to repeat this action another times, in total five times for the different phase. So the second one, lower water level, then we go for the third one, which is excavate the soil. The fourth one, well, place the culvert. The fifth one, when we cover the culvert with soil. And the final one, where we rise the water level. So now we have created our uh, six phases, but uh, we need to uh, check for the activation and deactivation of the geometry set, uh, tune the water level, etc. So I start with the initialization. So with the type we choose to specify steady state, so it means that we are going to explicitly specify the water level. So in our case, we start with a water level from minus two meter. <clears throat> in this uh, first phase, all the sets are active and they all carry soil property. Then in a second phase, again, we choose for specified steady state. Here now we change the water level to minus five. Again, all the sets are active and carry soil property. In a third phase, we are going to have only the soil basis as active. If I switch back to the geometry mode, it may be easier for you to see which part is active. So here only the the soil basis is active. Then we place the culvert. So we activate the culvert and the soil basis, but then here we change the material property to concrete. Fifth phase, still steady state, water level minus five. We have our soil basis active, we have a culvert with concrete active, then we put the cover soil on top of the culvert. And finally, the last one, where we are going to change back to minus two meter, and the soil basis, the culvert, and the cover soil are active. Uh, you notice that for every phase, uh, boundary conditions are active they are always there. So the analysis setup is almost uh, ready. Uh, we need to tune our uh, output. So to do that, I right click on output, edit property. Then I'm going to use user selection modify. So we will choose for global displacement. Uh, we are going to use stress uh, total, the effective Cauchy stress. The more Coulomb. For this one, we choose to use it at the integration point for the location. What else do we need? Uh, I'm going to close some of this. Uh, We choose to add the pore pressure, and we also want to see the Young's modulus. So 
So I think that's about all the output we need. So then I click close. Close. So my analysis is now ready and I can run the launch the analysis and run it. And then you see it on the at the bottom that your analysis is running. In order to save time, I have already run this analysis. Because I think it takes one or two minutes. It's not that long, but uh, too long anyway for a live demo. So we have uh, performed the analysis and uh, we are now going to look at the results. Uh, first, we want to check the, uh, the stiffness and the activation of element sets in the different stages. So we are going to set the result control properties as follow. So first I click on the, this icon and then you have access to the properties for the results. So uh, I don't show any deformation. Uh, I'm going to use one control level. Uh, for the scale limit, I'm going to specify the value with a mean of 1 e 10 newton per square meter and max of 3 e 10 newton per square meter. And I can also play with the color. So for the upper bound, I can keep this one, I'm going to use, oops, something like gray and something a little bit clearer here. Okay, so now if I uh, look at the, under my output at element results uh, to the elastic parameter Young, so the Young's modulus, I will see the evolution of the Young modulus during the different phase. So starting with the initialization, we see that uh, yeah, the Young's modulus is one of the sole property. We change the water level, so no change. We excavate, no change. Then we place the culvert, and there you see that the Young's modulus now is one of the concrete. Then we put back the uh, soil on top and finally raise the water level. So the variation of the Young's modulus is in a good agreement with the uh, material property that uh, we change during the different construction stage. We are now going to check the control plots of the prop pressure. So as I did for the Young's modulus, I'm going to specify some uh, settings for the results. So I'm going to use a mean value of zero, a max of 80,000 Newton per square meter. Uh, for the control level, I'm going to set that to seven, for instance. And I want to use a kind of blue grading color. So for the upper bound, I'm going to choose a deep blue. And a light blue for the top. And then if I go to pore pressure, I can see the evolution of the pore pressure during the different uh, phase. So if I go through the phase, then you see that we have, here we see the effect of lowering the, the water level. We excavate, we place the culvert, we cover, and then we raise again. So this is in a good agreement with uh, our construction stage and the variation of the water level. Uh, next, I could uh, show you how to check the vertical effective stresses. So again, I'm going to adjust uh, the result control property. So I continue with specify value. Uh, for the minimum value, I'm going to use minus 150,000 and a max of zero. And uh, for the upper bound, uh, I'm going to use a kind of light brown and something darker for the lower one. And 
if I go to the initialization and I show the vertical effective stress. And now I scan through the different phase. You can also see the evolution. So here is the first phase, then change in the water level. We excavate. We place the culvert. We put the soil on top of the culvert. And finally, we raise the water level. Last thing I'd like to show you, uh, we are going to check the more Coulomb stress capacity for all stages. Uh, so for your information, uh, Diana calculates the shear stress capacity against the more Coulomb failure criterion. So value higher than one means that the equivalent shear stress is higher than the capacity according to more Coulomb failure criterion. So I'm going to again set some uh, control properties settings so for the max and mean uh, i'm going to use zero and one i can keep this uh, color it's no problem and then i'm go back to the initialization and the more cool the shear cap results So this is uh, for the first phase, stress initialization. Then we lower the water level. We excavate. We place a culvert. Put some soil on top. And then raise the water level. So we see that there are areas where the Shear, the more Coulomb stress capacity is higher than one, so uh, that's basically where the shear stress are higher than the capacity. So one more time, I would like to thank you for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, as I mentioned in introduction, uh, you can uh, exercise yourself with this uh, case since it's one of our tutorial and it's available on our web page. And uh, please also keep an eye on our website because there are more webinars coming uh, and planned for the coming weeks. So uh, we will be back online very soon. Thank you for attending this webinar and I wish you a pleasant day.